remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. Evil genius, Travis Cook, back with you once again. And I know that since the uh, Supreme Court ruled a couple of days ago on the Hobby Lobby case, I've seen on the internet and on social media and, and in the news all kinds of women who have been extremely upset about this. And not strictly from the terms of being uh, in disagreement with the Supreme Court's decision on the case, but they've been genuinely upset in terms of kind of wondering what their next step should be, wondering how they're going to get by without an employer being for forced to buy whatever form of birth control they want. And while I certainly agree with the Supreme Court's decision, I, I'm still a human being, and I don't like to see people who are beside themselves or don't feel they have options or are just out of sorts. So I wanted to take it upon myself today on our program to kind of give an olive branch to the other side, if you will, and offer four very easy pieces of advice, four pieces of advice that will minimize the impact of the Hobby Lobby ruling on you. In fact, these four pieces of advice, if you follow them, will put you in a situation where you won't even realize your life has changed. In fact, if it changes at all, it'll change for the better. So these, these four pieces of advice, if you ladies will follow them, you'll never know that Hobby Lobby doesn't uh, buy certain forms of birth control for anymore, all right? Here's piece of advice number one. Go to the store. You see, this ruling did not ban any forms of birth control. You can go to a Walmart or a Target or a pharmacy or any number of other places and still purchase whatever birth control that you wanted to purchase that Hobby Lobby uh, now decides they don't want to, to uh, provide for you. So you can go to a Walmart and get all kind of the same birth control you had before. And if Hobby Lobby doesn't want to buy it, you can still do that on your own. In fact, all you have to do is go to any one of these stores. And uh, I'm, I'm going to give you a little bit of a visual illustration here. Just so you know exactly what you can do. You can go to any one of these stores and, and get take a couple of these uh, green pieces of paper here. Yes, yeah, little piece of paper. They're green. And uh, it's called money. That's what that's called. That's money. So you go to Target, you go to Walmart, you go to the pharmacy, and you, you put down some money on the counter there. And you may take a little bit more than that. Not a whole lot. But, uh, you know, you put a couple slips of that green paper out there. And, uh, you know, you just put that out there. And they'll give you, well, they'll give you, but they'll exchange whatever birth control you want. Even the baby killing stuff that Hobby Lobby doesn't want to give you anymore. They'll give you whatever kind of birth control you want in exchange for the money. You know, little green pieces of paper. You know, now, you can find these green pieces of paper any number of places. I mean, I keep mine in a wallet like this, but uh, I know that most ladies uh, keep their money in, in a purse or some of them keep it in a pocketbook. A few of you keep your money in your brassiere tucked into your cleavage down there. It's a little bit odd, but God bless those of you who do it. There's any number of places you can find that money. And if you can't find any of these little green slips of paper, you know, there's other alternatives too. You know, you can uh, you can also use a credit card. You know, that'll work too. So there's any number of ways that you can go to one of these stores and get you some of that birth control that Hobby Lobby no longer is forced to provide for you. The second piece of advice, if, if you don't want to go by the store, and purchase the birth control yourself, which you're still able to do. If that's not good enough for you, I've got a second alternative. The second alternative is find a new job. That's right. If you work for Hobby Lobby or somewhere else that has decided because of their religious convictions that they no longer want to purchase a certain type of birth control for you, you can find a new job. Think about it. We all, all of us, weigh any number of factors into the equation when we're deciding whether to take a job or not. 
When you go through the interview process for a job, I and mean, we all think of an interview process as the employer deciding which is the best employee for their position. Well, yeah, that's half of it. But the other half of the interview process is the prospective employee going from employer to employer to find the one that's the best fit for them. See, it goes both ways. So if for whatever reason, the provision of these certain types of birth control are that bloody important to you, then you can go somewhere else to another job that will provide you that as part of your compensation package. Other, other employers, other jobs besides Hobby Lobby are still allowed to do this. A lot of them still do. So there's jobs out there that you can go get. Makes sense to me. I mean, money's not the only factor that drives us to a job. I, for one, don't like to work night hours. So guess what? I don't take jobs that would require me to work during the evening. I'm happier that way. My employer's happy that way. Everybody gets along. And then other people who want those night hours, they'll go take those jobs. So if you, if, if you demand that baby killing birth control be part of your compensation package, go find a job that'll offer you that. There's plenty of them out there. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, I, I don't have the skills to just go after any job I want. I, I don't have a lot of options. Well, that's not Hobby Lobby's responsibility, nor is it the responsibility of any other employer. That's your responsibility. So go get those skills if you don't currently have them. Yeah, maybe you should have done that earlier in life, but if you haven't, not to worry. There's plenty of community colleges around, plenty of community uh community type of scholarships and different type of grants to help you along so you can get the skills you need if you don't have them to get the kind of job that you want whatever that entails okay so if you don't want to go to the store to purchase these baby killing uh, birth control uh, mechanisms on your own you don't want to find a new job that will provide them for you there's a third alternative the third alternative is sleep with men who will purchase condoms now this one seemed obvious to me but i guess a lot of people don't get it you may be, some of you ladies who are so stunned at this ruling, you may be shocked to find that there's a number of men out there, there's many men out there, who are completely okay, completely fine with the idea of footing the bill for birth control, for going out and buying a box of condoms or helping you buy whatever type of birth control you want. To, to us, it's a little bit like taking you to dinner or taking you to a show. It's kind of the price we pay so that we can have fun later. Okay. Plenty of those guys would do that for you. You may be surprised. I don't know where you're meeting these guys that won't buy condoms, but I guess they're out there. But rest assured, the majority of men out there, if they're in a, some kind of relationship with you or they just picked you up or whatever, they'll be willing to buy some condoms. So you don't have to really worry about it too much. We usually refer to these type of men as gentlemen. You may want to be on the lookout for this. Now, there's an added element to this particular piece of advice, uh, sleeping with men who will purchase condoms. There's kind of an advanced portion of this for those of you who, who really want to go a little bit further. Th this one won't be cut out for everyone, but a corollary to this piece of advice is not only to sleep with men who will purchase condoms, but hey, you could also go out and find a good husband. Yeah, you could. You know, a good husband, if you can find a really good one, He'll provide you with far more than just birth control. He'll probably provide you with a home and a car and decent surroundings and a decent lifestyle. If you get a really good husband, you may never have to work again, and that would solve a whole lot of the problems that you guys are crowing about. Now, not all of you are going to go for that one. So if that's a little too advanced for you, then just worry about sleeping with men who will purchase condoms. But if those three pieces of advice I've just given you are somehow pieces of advice that you just can't follow. If, if, you, if you can't bring yourself to go to the store, to find a new job, or to sleep only with men who will purchase condoms, then there is a fourth and final piece of advice that's guaranteed to get you through this. Don't have sex. Now I know some of you are, are flipping out when I say that and you think I'm about to give you a religious sermon. I'm not. I'm I'm not going to give you any sort of religious uh, reasoning for not having sex. I mean, I could. It would be pretty compelling. But I know most of you who are having this discussion are immoral anyway. So it would go in one ear, not the other. So I'm going to give you a different set of reasoning. I'm going to give you a more economic set of reasoning not to have sex. A more 
pragmatic set of reasoning not to have sex if you decide that hey i can't go and uh you know go to the store find a new job or sleep with guys who will buy me condoms no 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 no. can't do any of those things there's a good reason why you shouldn't have sex you may not realize this abstinence prevents pregnancy 100 percent of the times that it's successfully executed now that beats that that beats the success rate of any other method of birth control there is I mean, you could use a condom, and I don't want to go into detail here, but you can put the thing on correctly and follow the instructions down to the letter, down to the T, and it's not 100% effective. Same thing with every other kind of birth control, except for abstinence. It works every time it's tried. After all, if you cannot afford the risk of a potential child, then maybe you shouldn't be having sex to begin with. And I'm not saying that as a value judgment. I'm saying that as an economic reality. If you can't afford the risk of a potential child, then maybe the time and effort you spend trying to have sex with men who can't afford condoms would be better spent instead putting yourself in a better financial position for your future. You could use that time and effort to take a second or third job. You could use that time or effort to learn some skills like we talked a little bit about earlier. Get you a degree, something like that, so that one day you can pay for your own birth control and any number of other things and even provide a proper environment to raise a child in should you ever decide to have one. So let's not discount that piece of advice. But there you go. I've given you four extremely effective methods to minimize the impact of this Hobby Lobby case on you. You can go to the store and buy your own birth control, even the baby killing stuff. You can find a new job that will offer you baby killing birth control, or you can sleep with men who will purchase condoms, in which case you don't have to worry about the baby killing birth control, or you can just not have sex at all, in which case absolutely none of this will worry your pretty little head. The bottom line is this. Your employer should not be perceived to have any responsibility to you other than to pay for your labor at the mutually agreed upon price. People are talking about this case as though it has a lot to do with abortion. It really doesn't. I mean, the bottom line with abortion is we need to we need to make it illegal. We need to ban it in all cases. But really, this case didn't go anywhere near that. This case was really more about what rights does your employer have with the money they are spending for you, for your labor? Do they have some say in that? Particularly when that say clashes with their genuinely held religious beliefs. Now let's face it, if you and I go to a store and we see something that we find morally repugnant or or repugnant to us on a a religious basis, maybe it's a book, maybe it's a movie, maybe it's a a CD, no one's going to come along and force us to buy it, are they? Of course not. That would be completely wrong. Well, why why should we expect an employer to do the same? Doesn't make any sense. Besides, If the difference in religious views that you have with your employer is that huge, is that different, if if, if the religious beliefs held by a Hobby Lobby when it comes to birth control are that far removed from your moral uh, guideline, from your religious beliefs, from your moral beliefs, whatever they may be, then do you think you would ever truly be happy working in that environment anyway? I mean, even if the federal government made them give you your baby killing birth control? I mean, it's two completely different outlooks in the world. It's not going to be a corporate environment that you're going to be happy in. And likewise, you're probably not going to be an employee that they're going to be happy with. Y'all would be better off going your separate ways. So there you go. I put everything into perspective for you. Those of you in the yes all women crowd and the feminist crowd that are jumping up and down and screaming about this, it's not that bad. There's plenty of things you can do to minimize the impact of the Hobby Lobby ruling on you. I'm glad I could help, and you're welcome. This is America's Evil Genius. We will see you next time.